Hey, it's Jeff Zito, and welcome to another episode of Celebrity Jobber. You know, for the most part, people weren't just born stars, okay? They lived a regular life, they were regular people, and then boom, they got discovered. Or they had some kind of big break in their life that got them to be famous. Of course, they've got to have some talent and a little luck. My guest this week I've been familiar with for a long time. Growing up in New Jersey, I used to see commercials for a Broadway play called The Tap Dance Kid. And Alfonso Ribeiro was the star of that Broadway musical. You might also remember that Pepsi commercial that he was in back in the 80s with the king of pop, Michael Jackson. Oh, yeah. Been on Dancing with the Stars. The NBC sitcom Silver Spoons with Ricky Schroeder and, of course, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air as he played the character of Carlton and, of course, creating the very hysterical Carlton dance. What's Alfonso's story? How the hell did he meet Michael Jackson when he was such a young kid? How did he get into this world? Are his parents in the business? What was his big break? And has he ever lived a regular normal life? What kind of jobs did Alfonso have before he was Carlton from the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? We'll find out as Alfonso Ribeiro is my guest this week on Celebrity Jobber. The Celebrity Jobber podcast with Jeff Zito. If you like what you hear, please subscribe, give a five-star rating, and leave a review. Check out all our past episodes on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you pod. What if these celebrities weren't famous? What would they have become? What was their first job? We're about to find out. Hey, Alfonso. Hey, hey, how are you, buddy? I'm doing great, man. You know, um, I remember you as the tap dance kid. I grew up in New Jersey, and I remember seeing those oh, commercials. Man. Right on. Back in the day. How old were you back then? Um, when I did the show, when I, when we started, I was 12. Wow. So Yeah, I was 12 when, you, I, when, I, when we did that, which was great. You have been doing this for your, your whole life. Like, what, what was your very first, like, acting gig? So my very first, I was eight years old, um, and it was literally my first audition. Um, it was for a PBS TV series called Oh Ye Willie, and I, I, I went out for a character, and I didn't get the actual character because I was actually too short. And so I was, gonna, I was you know, playing the, the best friend of the Willie character, and they were like, ooh, that's not going to work. But what we're going to do is we're going to write in a, 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 a character called Pee Wee, and we'll make him, but we still love him, so we still want him on the show, but, but we weren't able to do the, the, the character that I went out for. But it was literally my first audition. I got it, and uh, we did like 12 episodes of that thing, and it was great. Dude, so were, was your parents like involved in showbiz? How did you get involved at such an early age? My, my parents weren't, but my, my dad's sister, my aunt, um, was a dancer, and she was on a TV show called Laughing, Rowan yeah. Martin's Laughing, yeah. in the '60s, which is where Goldie Hawn became famous. Um, and so, you know, there was a little bit of that. My grandfather was a calypso singer in in Trinidad. Uh, he was called the Lord Hummingbird, and so <laughs> there was a little bit of connection to uh, to show business. But realistically, you know. Not really, but my parents felt like there was something in me that that could be good, and they gave it a try. And day one, I was working, so it worked out. That's nuts. So your grandfather was was like a big star in Trinidad, Lord Hummingbird. He was a, he was a calypso singer. I wouldn't call him a big star, but you know they had a lot of them back in the day. Right. Very cool. What did your parents do for for work when you were growing up in New York my dad City? Dad was a correctional officer in New York. Uh oh. Um, and uh, and my mom was a director of nursing at a nursing home, so she was a nurse. Okay, so they they did no show business uh, whatsoever. You basically, just no, came from no, your no, your no. aunt, and and you just expressed an interest at, at doing this at a young age. Yeah, it just was something that like you know I was doing you know local uh, shows in in New York and and like you know workshops, and I was in the Glee Club, and I was you know it was just. Like that kid who performed, but it was for fun, like like a lot of kids do, right? Sure. But but whenever I whenever I would do something, I would get the you know 
I'd get the starring role. I, you know, I, I was, I was, you know, uh, Hansel and Gretel. I was Hansel, right? right. You know, Jack and Beanstalk. I was Jack, right? And so uh, we'd get. I, I, I continue gotten the lead roles, and so my parents were like, "Well, let's let's just see, right? You just never know. Let's just give it a try." And uh, and obviously it worked out pretty good. I've, yeah, I've been pretty fortunate. I'd say so. What about your b boy skills, Alfonso? You still you still have any breakdancing skills? Because uh, I could tell you right now. I used to be able to do the windmill about two and a half rotations, and and that was the thing. If you said to your friends, like, can you do the windmill? And you could. You were a major B-boy. Yes. Now, I can't do almost any of that now. I can I can pop and lock and all of you know, but I don't I don't try to get on the ground no more. That's, that that hurts. <laughs> yeah, it does. That hurts. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm trying to stay upright. Uh, every time I bring that up, I get made fun of so bad. Uh, <laughs> but but it was uh, it was the time. It was the time. Yes, absolutely. And during that time, day, I did it back in the day, but not anymore. Right, not anymore. right. Me too. Um, during that time, though. You had a commercial on TV with the king of pop, Michael Jackson. And I remember that was probably around the early to mid 80s. And tell me a little bit about about that as a young guy getting that gig and meeting probably the biggest star in the world at the time. Were you like, was it unbelievable? It was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. You know, we, we, uh, I was doing Tap Dance Kid on Broadway at the time in 1983-84, and I had done a commercial with a, a director by the name of Bob Giraldi, and so he had remembered me. And then Michael Peters, who was Michael Jackson's choreographer, um, had directed the commercial for Tap Dance Kid. Oh, okay. And so they both went to um, Pepsi and said, we got a kid. Right, individually, right? We got a kid that we think would be fantastic to do this commercial. And individually, they both said my name. And so Pepsi was like, that's crazy. Right. That the director and the choreographer both came to us independently saying there's this kid. So they just called me and offered me the gig. And, you know, and so I was fortunate enough to fly out to California from New York and do this commercial, and I got to meet Michael and became, you know, friendly with Mike and 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 his sisters and the brothers, and 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 it was it was amazing. It was it was a, a dream come true, right? That I, you didn't know you even had. Yes, it was, it was very special. So that, yeah, I would imagine that would be a dream come true, especially at the time. Like I said, the guy's the biggest star in the whole world. So so you you do that commercial with Michael and you, the, a friendship. Form so, uh, what what type of friendship? Like, did you guys see each other on occasion? How like how well did you get to know him? Yeah, every once in a while we would see each other. You know, if I came out to California, um, we we might see each other. And uh, you know, he invited me and my dad to come to one of the greatest nights of my life, uh, come to see his concert in in New York. And then afterwards, my dad and I went to his hotel room and hung out with them and like literally he his hotel room had a third floor dance studio in it i was like who has a dance studio in a hotel i didn't even know that they that they would do this right but his his suite had this and so we went up there and danced for like and this is like the middle of the night um danced for several hours and and uh and so every once in a while we'd see each other in passing and different stuff but you know it was always just kind of you know all of us hanging out my, my dad and michael also became friends so it was it was very cool that we could all you know hang and 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 talk and um my dad was very very impressed with who michael was you know especially yeah. as, a, as a cop you know he was just like michael was just an intelligent um well-grounded uh individual and it's very different than what people you know would see uh, you know, in the media, right? It was just a very, a very different relationship than what people saw. What was he like, Alfonso? Like when, you know, he wasn't on stage and performing and like when you were just hanging out and you see, you know, documentaries and stuff and he was childlike and this and that, but like, what was he, like, what was your memory of what he was like? My memory ultimately is that he was very, he was childlike, right? Like he was... I didn't look at him as an as an adult. I looked at him as like another teenager that we, that I was hanging out with. Right. right. So it would be no different than just hanging out with like a friend, 
right? It didn't feel like, oh, this is an adult. Because, you know, there, there really isn't that much difference, right, between a teenager and an adult, right? Sure. There really isn't, except adults have this jaded perspective, <laughs> right? They have, like, you got to do this, you know, you got to fit in this box, right? You gotta, it was none of those things with a happy, uh, enjoyable personality, right? So it, it, you know, it was just, just like hanging out with a friend. Yeah, man. I mean, I just imagine in the beginning it was just overwhelming. Like, whoa, Michael Jackson. You know, I had posters of this guy on my wall and, and all of that. And then to, to finally become friends with him and go through some of the experiences that you went uh, with him and go into his concert and go to his hotel rooms and like that to me seems like a overwhelming experience at at a young age yeah it was very cool very cool so tell me a little bit alfonso i remember silver spoons you got into that and you you ended up taking a, a short break from acting you ended up finishing high school and going to college like I, I, I'm so impressed by that because you're a star at this point in time. I mean, you are a legit star, obviously graduating high school, but you go into college. What were you, what were you studying? Were you studying acting? I mean, yeah, I ended up studying, um, I was, I was a theater major when I went to, when I went to, to college and, and part of it to me was, you know, in, in, television specifically, and especially for child actors, from the age of 16 to 18, nobody really hires you, right? Because it's easier just to hire an 18-year-old and not have to deal with a social worker uh, and a teacher and, and dealing with all of that. Okay. Right? So there, there, are, there are young-looking 18-year-olds. So they would hire those people instead of hiring, you know, a 16-year-old kid. And because I knew this, I was like, you know what? Rather than have this, like, constant desire to go and do auditions and go and try to get roles that I know I'm not going to get because nobody wants to hire that kid, I'm like, let's just take a break and be a kid, right? Finish high school and have, like, normal kid-ish, um, you know, relationships in and, 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 and that way. And then let's, let's see. Let's go to college. Let's, like, you know, get a little bit of that experience. And then... Once I was in college and I did a play that really made me fall in love with acting again, then I called up my agents and said, I'm ready. Right. I'm ready to come back. And I got my first two auditions. The second audition was for Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Let's talk about the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Did, I mean, look, it seems like you've been a star pretty much your, your entire life since you were eight years old. But... Would you consider, and I don't know if there is a big break here to talk about, was was the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, do you consider that maybe your big break? Because that was a pretty huge show. There's there probably people asking you every day to do the Carlton dance. I, I mean, that was, was, do you consider that maybe like you're, you're coming out? You, you know, it's, I, I can see how the outside world would see it that way, right? And obviously... There is a there's a truth to it in that it was the biggest thing that I have done. Um, Silver Spoons was a pretty big show, right? Um, it was on on NBC back in the mid you know eighties. And truth be told, Silver Spoons had higher ratings than the Fresh Prince of Bel Air ever did. Right? Wow. Right. So it's hard for me to go now. Obviously, you know it was the the you know cable started coming into play, and so the numbers all went down. But technically speaking, more people watched me on Silver Spoons than they watched me on, on the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, now looking back, obviously had a history and a future that that, that, that that show that Silver Spoons did not have. So for me, it was, it was a re-coming out. Right. It wasn't a, this is my big break. Right. Looking back, it's the biggest thing that I'd done in that part of my career, but it didn't feel that way because it was just another TV series that I was doing. Man, I always wanted to ride that train that they had in the house there at Silver Spoons. I always I wanted to get up. Brother, Did it you? was such a letdown. Really? It, it didn't 
didn't go nowhere. It really. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it didn't go nowhere. It was. It was like I, I was so excited to do that. I, you know, because I didn't start the show from the first season. I came on in the third season, and I was like, oh my god, I can't wait to ride this train. The people in the train, I was like, this was oh. so not worth it. Oh, total letdown. Did you ever have a a regular job, Alfonso? Ever? Have you ever? No. No. Never, no. never worked at McDonald's. You never delivered no. newspapers. Nothing. No, no, nothing. Unbelievable, unbelievable. You know, I like man. to think of my career as regular jobs because that's all I know, right? It's crazy. You know, it's, always, it's always the perspective, right? Like perspective from from the outside looking in or the inside looking out. For me, I've always had regular jobs. They were regular jobs in the field that I actually love doing, right? So it's like, is an accountant a regular job? Gotcha. Yeah. No different than being an actor is because if that's your field, that's your field. And uh, now, of course, promoting a new season of America's Funniest Videos. This thing has been going on for such a long time and it's still popular. 7 p.m. Sundays on ABC. How long have you been hosting this show for? Well, this is my ninth season as the host of the show. It is such a pleasure. I, I really just enjoy um, every moment. You know, the, the beautiful thing for me is the fact that this show is, you know, it, it's the only true family show that's really left on major television where, right. you know, grandparents and kids and everyone in between can sit down together and enjoy um, you know, a show together and laugh together and connect together. And so it's just a pleasure that I get to continue to do that because I'm all about family entertainment. Yeah, man. I mean, I got to tell you, through your whole career, I never read once that you ever got in any trouble. You seemed like you you never you, you never were that, you know, child star that uh, crashed a car. Uh, you, you know, you always kept it. You, never. You, well, it probably because your dad would have kicked your ass. Right. Because he was a, it was a lot of that. It was a lot of that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, look, I, you know, I, I always like to say it's it's so simple to not do dumb things. Right. It is it's just. Uh, if you if you learn and, and and by the way I don't ever blame a kid for making mistakes right because at the end of the day a kid knows as much as the people around them teach him um, and if you're around people that don't know any better you're gonna also not know any better and I had great family who knew better right you know my my grandmother was a cop um, so like it you know at, at Rikers Island and so I learned what right and wrong was at a very early age um, didn't mean that I never did anything that was wrong but I knew what it was and you had the choices you had every day every person has a choice to make I, I am not I, I am not really sympathetic to people who make bad decisions because I'm always like did you know that that was wrong? Yes. Then, then, then why should I be unhappy for you? Why should I have, have sympathy for you? You chose to do this. You didn't have to do that. You know, now, of course, we all recognize that there are circumstances in the world where, you know, necessity creates, you know, sometimes wrongdoing. Um, but outside of necessity, it's kind of like you just know what right and wrong is and that you have the choice. Do you want to do it? Do you not want to do it? Man, you're great, man. Alfonso Ribeiro, he's uh, the host of America's Funniest Videos, his ninth season, Sunday nights, 7 p.m. on ABC. Great talking to you, man. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. What a story, huh? Alfonso Ribeiro never had a job outside of show business in his whole life. His first gig, eight years old, he got an acting gig for uh, PBS. And uh, and off to the races. I mentioned the tap dance kid growing up in New Jersey. A lot of commercials for that Broadway play, the tap dance kid. I remember that when Alfonso was very young. And of course, meeting Michael Jackson, did that Pepsi commercial with him. And uh, he told the story about how he hooked up with Michael Jackson, became friends. His father maintained a, a pretty good relationship with Michael Jackson. They became friends. I mean, this guy, the king of pop, the biggest superstar in the world. So you could imagine how becoming friends with Michael Jackson could be, you know, dreamlike. Alfonso's father, a prison guard. His mother worked as a nurse in a nursing home. So regular people, not in show business. But his grandfather, back in Trinidad, was known as Lord Hummingbird. He was a singer slash performer. 
And he also had an aunt who was a dancer on Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In back in the 60s and 70s. I thought Alfonso's big break was probably Carlton on The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Now, with Will Smith, it was a pretty big show. Carlton had his own dance. But no, he kind of reminded me before that show, he decided to go to college, get a little normalcy back into his life. But before college, it was Silver Spoons, that show with Ricky Schroeder. That actually had big ratings, and that was probably his big break. Not to mention the commercial with Michael Jackson that, you know, really put him on the map. But uh, really cool dude. He's been hosting America's Funniest Videos Sunday nights on ABC since 2015. Pretty successful career in show business since he was eight years old. So going on about 45 years as Alfonso is 52 years old. You know, sometimes these guys and their story will surprise you. This one definitely surprised me, that's for sure. And thank you for listening to another episode of Celebrity Jobber, streaming on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you consume your podcast listening. And would be grateful if you could subscribe, leave a review. And if you really like us, a five-star rating would be excellent. You can follow on our new YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash the at sign Celebrity Jobber. We're also on Instagram, TikTok, and you just never know. You know some of your favorite sports celebrities or actors or musicians, comedians, they might have been just regular people if it wasn't for one big break in their life. You can check out all of our past episodes, by the way, on CelebrityJobber.com. Some really great stories out there. So again, thanks for listening. And until next week, I'm Jeff Zito. We'll see you then.